Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with the EVT Astro. And today, as you can see, we are talking about stellar view telescopes. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years, I've had the privilege of owning over a hundred scopes, more accessories than I could count. And uh, here's a couple more of the telescopes. Alrighty, so and before we get into looking at all the you know pretty specs of the scopes and that type of deal, let's run through a little bit of the history of the company just because I find it to be really cool and curious, you know. <laughs> uh, so the company was started by Vic down in California in 1998. Um, this is actually after he retired of working in the Forest Service for about 30 years. So in his retirement, he decided to start a telescope company. Company. I think that's pretty inspiring, pretty cool. Uh, and why you might ask? Well, he, you know, he kind of had this, you know, idea that a guy should be able to go out or a gal and buy a fine telescope without, you know, jumping through a bunch of hoops. Interestingly enough for me, um, this is actually like around that 1998 uh, type of time frame is when I was kind of getting into the hobby as well. Um, I specifically remember the Nighthawk, uh, it's an 80 millimeter F5 Acromat that they released, uh, you know, back in the day around this type of time frame. And I specifically remember there was a lot of buzz, you know, you know, this is back when the dinosaurs rolled and dodged, right? And, you know, <laughs> the internet was in its infancy, I guess. But anyway, um, yeah, so it was kind of like, you know, like one of those hot telescopes that I specifically remember. I don't believe that I purchased one at the time, uh, but over the years, I've kind of made up uh, for my mistake with a bunch of other Stellaries. All right, and so Stellary, they kind of went through several phases. So back in the day, um, in the early days, uh, when they started uh, producing, um, you know, kind of like finer apromatic telescopes, they used to source optics from, uh, from Russia. So from uh, LOMO and LZOS, uh, very, very good optics. Um, and, you know, obviously, kind of like, you know, as history went on, Russia got into trouble for certain things, and they weren't able to get optics from them. So some of their telescopes, I think till this day, uh, they still, uh, they import optics, but they import them, you know, from like overseas, probably from like China and Taiwan and that type of deal. Uh, and more recently, they started making a premium line of uh, uh, apromatic refractors that are made with their own optics that they make, you know, here in, in the U.S. All right, generally speaking, so their scopes, they were kind of available uh, in a couple of different colors. So they had this white color that like both of these are. And from the ones that I, I remember seeing, I know that they've had like kind of like, you know, the typical gloss type of finish. Like both of these are kind of like that texture pebble type of finish. I believe this is pan, I don't believe it's powder coat. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, they, you know, they're both actually, you know, pretty high quality paints. I haven't really seen very many of them with chips and that type of deal. Um, I, again, personally prefer the kind of like the textured finish. It doesn't show scratches or scuffs or anything like that. Um, the, uh, the other thing that they kind of offer is essentially two focuser options. So there's the focuser option of uh, uh, the Stellar V focusers that they make themselves. Um, and they also offer the option, if you're not familiar, with the feather touch focusers, which are, you know, I'd say bar none the best focusers that, you, you know, money can buy essentially. Alrighty guys, and so generally speaking, you know, fit and finish on these, um, you know, I honestly have nothing bad to say about them. I've probably owned like, I don't know, like I'd say at least, probably like six, seven stellar views. All of them had had a, you know, like nice fit and finish. I've never really had any issues. An early example that I had of a, um, a four inch uh, Apple that they made with the Russian optics. This one had a uh, Lomo optics. Uh, it kind of had like glossy type of paint and that one, this thing was like from like 2004, 2005 time frame. So it's, you know, kind of an older model. Uh, that one, you know, I, you know, you know, it's kind of nitpicking, but I, it, it did have, uh, the tube did have like a couple of places to where there was dust in the paint, you know. Again, that's kind of nitpicking and it really wasn't like, you know, like a bunch of it, there was just like a few specs. So, you know, if I'm to nitpick, that's the only thing that I'd say that I've seen with older models. Okay, kind of keeping with that scope, the SV4, um, the one that had the Russian optics, 
It was one of the best, probably the best four inch Apple that I've ever had. I mean, just super sharp optics, contrast was amazing. Uh, sharpness was just totally amazing on it as well. Kind of moving on to the more recent ones uh, that use kind of like the imported, uh, you know, um, I'd say like Asian optics probably. Not, not exactly sure where they import them from, but I'm guessing somewhere in Asia. Um, I have had the SV-130 a few years ago, and guys, let me tell you, even though that was kind of like more of like, you know, I'd say uh, similar optics to what probably like William Optics uses and some of the other metal brands, but man, that thing had a really sharp image. It was actually like one of the most memorable scopes that I've owned. Uh, that particular one actually had a three inch feather touch of focus here as well. So, I mean, it really felt like a very, very premium unit. All right, and kind of moving on to the newer um, optics, the, uh, the ones that they currently make in America, uh, the scope line that they you know use those and it's called the SVX line. Um, I personally have not had a chance to observe with one or like image with one uh, but from what I understand from everything that I've read about them I mean they are top notch and honestly guys you know like some of the brands like you know for instance Astrophysics right now it's considered to be probably the best you know refractor brand that's kind of how they started at first they weren't you know per se like appreciated for what they are and I you know personally believe that this new SVX line from Vic I mean uh, it probably will be just as highly regarded as, you know, any of the, you know, like super premium brands uh, that are out there right now. Alrighty guys, so yeah, in conclusion, I mean, um, out of the dozen or so uh, Stellar Refractors that I've personally owned, I really, you know, like I'd say that the craftsmanship on them is really good. The build quality overall is really good. Optics wise, you know, it really depends which one you're looking at. Like if you get one of the newer SVX, you know, models, I'd say they're, you know, like as as good as they get realistically in a refractor if you get one of the older russian ones i mean guys those are some of the best optics that i've seen so those are amazing they are really highly sought after so you, you know you're not just going to randomly stumble upon one i mean people know that they're <laughs> they're good optics in there uh the ones that kind of like you know like these two guys that kind of use the imported optics you know like i always said they're kind of like uh they're kind of hit and miss you could get a lens that's super duper amazing or you could kind of get more of an average lens uh, i from what i know they do offer uh test specs sheet uh that you could pay uh extra for on some of these models so like if you do get one with this you know spec test sheet uh you're pretty much you know guaranteed that you're getting a really good scope anyhow uh just generally speaking though from the ones that i've owned i mean they've all been awesome so anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this video hopefully it was informative if you are considering a stellar view telescope if you guys have any questions comments or anything like that leave them in the thing below if you're not subscribed please do consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video bye